So that is how you use enhanced for loop. So when should you use while loop, when should you use for loop and when should you use enhanced for loop? Pretty similar to if else statement and switch. These three loops, while, for loop and enhanced loop, they are pretty interchangeable, interchangeable. It means that when you have a task, theoretically you could complete this task with uh, every of those um, loops. However, there are some specific uh, guidelines that you could follow, should follow. The first, um, if you are iterating our collection, for example, if you're iterating our array, then you should consider to use enhanced for loop since it provides you with a very nice um, grammar, coding grammar for this uh, data type and this is what you should use. If you know that there will be not so many iterations, that, he, that there, are, there is a specific number of iterations and you know this number in advance, then maybe it is better for you to use for loop. And in case uh, you know that the number of iterations depend on some specific condition, then consider using while loop. Now we are done with our statements and the next uh, topic that we want to cover is about our keywords for control. So keywords for control, uh, first we will start with return. There are three that we want to cover today, return, break and continue. And we are creating a new class return in order to have a look on um, return statement. So let us imagine that we have an array um, of strings that is called employees. And now we will write a method. So the method um, till now we were using mainly the main method. However, there are, uh, you usually define the behavior of your objects with the help of uh, methods. And now some kind of such method we will write now. So let us say that we would like to find a specific employee in a list uh, of um, employees. So we are now defining the method and we will, we will actually cover methods in the next exercise. Uh, however, I will just now write once, but I will, uh, you will understand the um, details of this method in the next exercise. So this is a static, static boolean method, find employee. that returns string employee ID. And we're putting our method inside of the brackets. And now we will look over our array. So for string, uh, let us give the name emp for our instance in our array employees. We want to uh, show only specific employees that are um, that have some specific ID. So, if employee equals to employee ID, Only in this case, we want to return true. Otherwise, return false.
So we have here some errors and... Ah yeah, of course. So actually the reason is that we are now writing method and we cannot, of course, we cannot put this method inside of main method. So we need to take it out. And this return should be actually here. Employees. No, now it's correct. So what do we have now? We have now first, we have now variable and then we have a method. The methods can be of two types. First type is when the method returns a value. And another method is the method that uh, doesn't return any value, that is void. Um, in our case, we have a method that returns a value. That's why we are specifying that this method is of Boolean type here. And this method with the name find employee takes one uh, variable, employee ID, and then it uh, looks, uh, it is, it uses for loop. It looks uh, through uh, the whole um, array of employees and looks the employee that has this employee ID. And if this, if uh, Java finds this employee, it returns true. Otherwise it returns failure. So here you see an example of return statement. And this return statement, um, it completes the execution of the method by returning a value. So in this case, if, if it is true, then the return statement will return you the value of this um, employee that was found. No, actually it's not. Uh, it will return here the Boolean value. So that will be true or false. Um, so this return keyword um, this is so to say hard stop of the method since uh, doesn't matter what comes next this uh, part of the code will be uh, stopped and the execution will be stopped as well another option uh, for interruption of the code but in a bit soft uh, way is break statement we will create now a class that is called break without any main method because we will write now main method uh, the method uh, by ourselves. So the um, here let us say that we have the same uh, static string array string of array of strings. That is, uh, that's name is employee. And we have static void method now. So the method that doesn't return any value. Static void find employee. And this method takes one parameter that is called employee ID and it, cal cal uh, it uh, concatenates a string my assigns it to my string variable that is employee ID plus was not found. And for, for string emp, instance emp, in the array employee, employees, if our emp equals to employee ID then we want to concatenate to uh, receive another string my string 
that is employee ID plus string was found. And afterwards break. And then we would like to print system out print line a statement or maybe just the variable my string. Okay, so we see here should be equals. Here I forgot. And here is S. Yeah, now it's correct. So you see how Eclipse helps you to notice all mistakes, misspellings. So see, you see here, you see how break statement soft interrupts your code only here in this specific part of code and then the execution continues from the next um, from the next section. So it means that when this break statement um, will be executed, then the program will switch to this part of the code. So if we would apply here, for example, somewhere here return, then uh, nothing that is uh, followed by return will be ex executed. So we are talking now about method. So this is the method and we see how the method uh, is separated uh, by curly braces. So break statement allows you to break only specific block of code. In this case, this if block, if statement. And we are coming uh, further to the next statement that will be executed. And the last keyword is continue. So this keyword um, introduces the softest interruption of the code. So now I will just open the ready code and we will have a look on it. So you will see here some errors, but this is because we didn't define a class for this object. Um, however, this is not a goal of this um, exercise. So what is important to know here that is that we have here employee object it is here and we have a method void that doesn't returns uh, doesn't return any value and we have here inside one for loop and one if loop so when we want uh, that our code is interrupted but in a soft way that means that we want that this iteration of this current iteration of the loop is uh, stopped but the next iteration um, continues immediately, then we use continue. So it means that uh, if we just summarize now all three keywords, um, we use continue. When we want to stop one iteration of a loop, we use break if we want to uh, stop the loop and uh, to continue to execute our code inside of the method where the loop is uh, placed and we use return when we want to exit the whole method. Um, one more topic, or um, just small part, what I wanted to cover um, is that you can also uh, put in your code some optional labels. A label, it's an optional pointer uh, to the head of statement that uh, allows your application to jump to uh, this uh, line of code or just break it. So, for example, let us open our break um, here. So, if we would like to use option here, we could put it at the beginning of our statement as optional just a second. Optional label. 
that is placed here and you would like to break this optional label. So optional label is uh, the word of your choice that you want to put here. So you could put here one, two uh, and the same word here. And um, the convention is that you, uh, in order to write the name of the label, you uh, use the uppercase uh, letters and you are separating words, words with underscore. And when you are uh, breaking some specific uh, statement, then you use the name, the same name that you use to define uh, this statement. And that's all for now. And now um, let's just go come quickly to our homework. So the homework is similar to um, the homework of the last exercise. Um, one additional task or just small task maybe um, we have uh, we had in the, our first exercise here the BMI calculator for five people. So you saw how inefficient it is to uh, write every time um, this code again and again. So the very first task for you is to rewrite this code uh, using a loop and uh, you will uh, think you will have to think of which loop exactly you should uh, use for this. Uh, then you have of course a lot of uh, codes in Eclipse that I will save uh, all of them to Moodle. Please open them and um, go through them. Also you have a lot of codes on your slides um, on your from the lecture. We did cover uh, some of them, but not all of them. So please feel free to copy them into Eclipse and um, run and change some variables and maybe uh, just enhance your learning uh, through this um, kind of changing, changing and looking at the result of the, your console output. Then I have prepared for you some quizzes and some programming tasks. Uh, so you will find the, solu the solutions uh, to them in Moodle as well. For today uh, it is all and thank you for your attention and I hope to see you next time.